since the beginning of Advent, we've reflected on hope and faith. Week one, when we lighted the first candle, we spent time thinking through what Christian hope is all about. And week two, we also spent time reflecting on what faith is and how we need faith even as we prepare for the coming of the Lord at Christmas. This week, we are lighting the third candle, the rose candle, representing joy. So at Mass, you will see the priest wearing rose, telling us that today is a day of rejoicing. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, as the entrance antiphon will tell us. Beginning from tomorrow, we'll be focusing on the infancy narratives. Whenever we attend Mass or as we do our daily readings, and it carries the whole import of joy, joy which comes from the birth of the Messiah. You will read from Luke chapter 2, verse 10. The angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Messiah the Lord. So the birth of Jesus is a news of great joy. We all need joy in our lives, don't we? But what is this joy? My brother, my sister, when we talk about joy, it is more than momentary happiness. It is a deep-seated disposition which is not dependent on the changing circumstances of life. Think about it. A deep-seated disposition, which is not dependent on the changing circumstances of life. So even as we are thinking of Advent, we are thinking of joy, it is for us to develop that habit of being joyful, even when things around us are not what we expect them to be. And that kind of joy can only come from God alone. Not from any human being, not from any material possession. That kind of deep-seated joy that only God can provide. Father Robert Koss says something beautiful about joy that I want to share with you. He says, for Christians, joy is a virtue. Unlike happiness that comes and goes depending on what is happening in our lives, joy is much deeper. Joy arises from a deep sense of gratitude for being part of God's creation. It is like the deep still water in the lake. Happiness and sadness by comparison are like waves on top of the lake coming and going depending on the wind, rain, or other transitory elements. The part I like is when he says that joy is like the deep still water in the lake. Then he compares to happiness and sadness, the deeds are like the waves on top of the lake. They come and go depending on the wind or the rain. So, it is important for you, as a child of God, to think, how do I develop joy in ways that will grow my faith and increase my hope in my God? You know the song that we, we, we've been singing, Joy Like a River in My Soul? <laughs> Actually, that whole song has one line. Joy like a river, joy like a river, joy like a river in my soul. But again, look at the imagery. Joy being compared to a river. River nourishes. Rivers will always allow fishes to team in it. Rivers will bring freshness to wherever they flow. So if you have that joy, which is in you like a river, then it gives you a sense of even becoming an instrument of joy in the lives of other people. You must bring happiness. You must bring revival 
You must bring nourishment to those who come your way. So this week, we want to be reinforcing the increasing understanding of joy. And as we do this, keep praying the words of the song, Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Give me joy in my heart, I pray. Give me joy in my heart, keep me praising. Keep me praising to the end of day. And may the God of joy fill your heart with his joy. That joy which no circumstance of life can take away from you. Have a blessed week.